in today's show. I'm looking at the waiver wire for fantasy basketball, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out PrizePicks.com or use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. We're here to talk waiver wire. We know that shit's going to go sideways at some point this week. It already has with games being postponed Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday as well. Um, so you've got to be nimble. You've got to be on your feet. You've got to be ready for looking at uh, short-term ads as well. I can't really talk about you know, short-term ads too much in this show because I don't know which players are going to get ruled out or which games are going to get postponed. That's where you need to sort of watch um, you know, watch for the news. And uh, in the pregame show, I'll probably talk about stuff like that as well. But this is more just an overarching look at the waiver wire, um, making some assumptions on things. It's tough to do. It's a really tough area to try and navigate. But let's let's do it. We're talking waiver wire. What a way to sell the show. We're talking waiver wire right now. So let's get into it. And these are the players who have been most added recently. And we will start in Los Angeles with Isaiah Thomas. Yes, Isaiah Thomas's first game was really quite good. It was. Um, from a from a scoring point of view, I guess is, is what I'll say. He came in. He did a lot of damage at the end of a garbage time loss. They do have a lot of players out. But yeah, there is no indication to me that Thomas is a must-add player or anything like that. He had 19 points. He had a usage of 36%. He shot 42% from the field. Uh, he had one assist. All right, the 19 points is great. He did stack up a little bit of that at the end of the game. He got to the line nine times, which is highly irregular to get that many times in 22 minutes. I mean, you can look to stream him if you like. They play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday next week. The Thursday, obviously, is the, um, what do I call it? The, the high volume day. So you probably wouldn't even use him there. So while I get nostalgia for Isaiah Thomas and I love the story behind him and people think that the league did him dirty and the Celtics and all that sort of stuff, I'm not convinced, Yeah, even compared to some of the, the other names on this list, yeah, he to me is not a guy that has necessarily long-term staying power. He may not even stay on this team past this 10-day contract and he might not even get you know, 10 points next game. That, that's a possibility. So I wouldn't be... You're falling all over myself as everyone else seems to have, not everyone else, a lot of people have as he's been picked up in a bunch of leagues. I wouldn't be going for that necessarily. PJ Tucker's being added in a lot of spots and he's totally fine. He is a very low upside player who is playing at a decently high level at the moment. Um, That's working out well for him. But again, it's one of those ones where I just don't see the long-term value in P.J. Tucker. I know that Bam is out, but irrespective of Bam or Jimmy being out, that doesn't mean that Tucker's going to put up great numbers. He is... Look, he is playing well. Over the last three games, he's averaging 17 points. He's shooting 57% in that time, hitting three threes a game. I don't feel like that's real at all. So he's an interesting streamer, and that's about it. Trim Rikiki is an interesting one. I don't think that he's a particularly good long-term player or fantasy player, but... What he has done with Wendell Carter Jr. out has been great. He has averaged, he's got 11 steals in his last four games and four blocks. That is really bumping his numbers up. He's also hitting 2.3 triples a game and he's getting 32 minutes. Now, the, if we don't know the extent of Wendell's injury and if Wendell and Mo Bamba, who are both out, remain out, yeah, Okiki does have short-term value. I have no... No way of thinking that's going to be long-term. Remember, these last couple of games where his usage has been up, there's been no Carter, no Bumba, but also no Terrence Ross and no Cole Anthony. Right, so when we look at all of that, 
I, I can see him as a short-term ad, but they don't play the Magic until Wednesday with a postponed game early this week. And then they play on Thursday, high volume day, and they play against Sunday. So you might get two games out of a Kiki this week. And then by yeah, by then, you might actually have Carter back. You might have Bumba back. You probably have Anthony back. You might have Terrence Ross back. And then he goes back to a 22-minute-a-night roll off the bench. Now, if Carter's injury is season-ending, that does boost a Kiki's value, and it pushes him towards the end of standard leagues. Stephen Adams... Eh, look, he's fine. Look, there's absolutely no upside, I don't think, in Adams. But if you want someone to come in and grab some boards, no problem. Gary Harris, much like Akiki, is getting a little bit of a boost with players out. He'd been trending towards 12s anyway with the absence of Suggs. But you know, the other absences of players there, like Terrence Ross, does boost Harris. So he's an interesting streamer. Uh, Blake Griffin, that's really just with the Nets um, injuries slash COVID issues. Now, we know that their games have been postponed and they don't play again at this point until Thursday. So, yeah, adding him at this stage, not worth it. Um, Chemezi Metu, I-, I like that as a longer-term situation. There is an open starting spot there. Will it be Terrence Davis, Marvin Bagley, Buddy Heel, Chemezi Metu? To me, Metu is the guy they should be trying to look at. There's a chance they trade someone like Harrison Barnes. It's going to be rough. It's going to be up and down for Metu, but I think he's worth grabbing. And that's just seeing where it goes. I'd rather him over Davis and Bagley, personally. Kemba Walker. We saw him, with everybody out, forced back into the starting lineup. The Knicks don't play again until Tuesday, and they could have Derek Rose back there, but they won't have Grimes or McBride or Barrett, most likely, or quickly. So there is an opportunity for Kemba to play and be a short-term streamer. David Duke. Why should I change? He's the one who sucks. Um, providing some good value. Sure, but the Nets games are now postponed. So you can probably go ahead and drop him. And the JaVale McGee's been added in a lot of spots. He's the guy that I think a lot of people who are rostering Hassan Whiteside think he is, or think Hassan is. And McGee is providing that number. He is more just of a a stream in on game day, and that's why he's been added so much lately, because there's a Suns game on today. But long term, I don't really think that he is any sort of answer. But... If you need the answer to the question, why do I have so many subscriptions and, where, subscriptions and where's my money going? Maybe the answer to that question is because you just signed up to stuff because, hey, we just need to entertain ourselves. And then the next question you might ask is, how do I save that money? And the answer to that question is Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying subscriptions you don't need, want, or the ones that you simply forgot about. On average, people save up to 720 bucks per year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Let's look at some droppable players. Let's throw the caveat in there again. You don't have to drop them, but they're guys that when I look at longer term value on these players, I don't think they're going to remain valuable enough. And they are rostered in enough leagues where yeah, this is going to you know, impact somebody who's listening to this or watching this, that they're going to go, oh, I've got this guy, maybe I don't need to hold. And it's not just dropping for nobody, it's dropping to stream, it's dropping to add high upside guys, it's dropping to stash injured players, whatever it is. But players on this list, I don't think are must-hold guys. Now, some of them are less must-hold than others, and we'll talk about that. Eric Bledsoe on this list. I mean, it's had pushed up a little bit, but that was largely because Paul George was out. Batum returned last game. He went back to shit. You can pretty comfortably, I think, drop Bledsoe in 12s and probably 14-team leagues and, of course, anything shallower. Terrence Davis had that nice little run and then has done nothing else. Right? Does this bloke have the track record that we have to hold through this? Absolutely not. Now, he could come back and he could start and he could put up good numbers again, and that's great. But I just don't think that he's a guy that you just need to sacrifice zeros when he might not even get that opportunity when he's healthy anyway. I talked about him already, but let's do it again. Hassan Whiteside. The world. He's rostered in too many leagues. I know he's a great streamer on game day, but people are just holding him. There's no need for it. He does not need to be rostered in as many leagues as he is. He is a stream option only. Montrez Harrell. That one's maybe a little bit more controversial. But he's been bad, man. Like, he's just not playing well at all. And 
I think that when Thomas Bryant returns, it's Harold that cops it, not Gafford. Harold is 179th over the last week. He's averaging 11 and 5. No steals, no blocks. Free throws have dropped off again. He looks more like the guy yeah, that struggled with the Lakers. You don't have to drop him, of course. He's still a top 100 player over the course of the season, but he was top 25 at one point, and that's really helping keep those season-long numbers up. He is trending down and has been for weeks. And I really just don't think that he's a must-hold player, much like his teammate Spencer Dinwiddie, who is just, oh, he's just poor, man. 143rd this season, 305th over the last week, averaging four points per game in his last three. Now, I feel pretty comfortable in saying that that's not going to stick. Like, he's going to be better than that because he's shooting 21%. But his assists are down. He's never been a high... He hasn't hit a three in the last week. He's never been a high threes or steals guy. He's a bad rebounder. He's a poor shooter. He's a poor free throw guy. He was, to me, just like an 11th round, 12th round sort of player anyway. He's underperforming that. Uh, there's just no need, I don't think, to hold on to him. Get that garbage out of here! Keldon Johnson, another one that people will find controversial because he can okay, have big scoring games, and that is valuable. And if you're in a points league, I think he is a hold. But in a category league, like he's 155th this season. His last little bit of time has been better. He's hitting three threes per game on 21% over the last, oh, sorry, on uh, uh, with 21 points per game over the last three games, and that's really good. But he's doing that shooting 59% from three. He's average. He's got one steal in his last three games, zero blocks, and four assists. Like this is the problem with Calden. If that shot doesn't fall at 58%, which it won't, he he brings nothing else to the table whatsoever. You don't have to drop him, of course, but he is not that good in a category league. Tim Hardaway. We got a boost with Hardaway with Doncic out, and that makes him all right. But again, if you're looking to create value for what happens in week 11 or week 13 or week 15 or whatever, longer term numbers, yeah, Hardaway's just going to be that fringe player. Nice little boost at the moment. It does make it hard to drop. But if you do need to make that hard decision because someone else got dropped and you need to add that player who's going to have more long term value, sacrifice the short term with Hardaway. You can do that. Pat Mills, another one, who is providing okay numbers. They're not actually great numbers. But you look at the postponement of Brooklyn's games, the fact that he's still only the 126th ranked player this year, and then Kyrie's going to come back for half the games, Harden's going to return, Joe Harris is going to come back, and Mills is just profiling as a, as a three-point streamer. Love the bloke, but I just don't see him as a must-roster 12-team league guy. And then, of course, the wiki Chris Boucher. I don't think it's going to be long before Precious Achua is back starting. Um, Boucher started last game like he's been all right. Like, he, he, has he really blown us away when everyone's been out? Not really. He's a top 90 player over the last week, averaging 12 and 7. Like, that's okay, but he had literally no competition. And I know Siakam remains out and Birch is still up in the air. But, yeah, I just don't think that Boucher is going to be sniffing 20 minutes a night. And if you do need to create that roster spot, he can be the bloke to go. Let's look at some must roster players now. These are guys who I think are all top 100 ish sort of guys and are floating around on waiver-wise, whether that's on Yahoo or ESPN. It might be your league. And this applies to basically 10-team leagues and up. Des Bain. I think he's got to be rostered. I know that there will be an impact of Ja Morant returning, and he could easily turn into a droppable player. He could. But for now, you've got to roster him. The Rabbit Hunter, Alex Caruso. Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. I just think you can't leave him on the wire. There's no way. Zach Levine's still out. Um, but even so, when this team is healthy, he's really good. He gets a lot of steals. He gets assists. He's shooting better. He plays good minutes. He needs to be rostered. I don't know why we're not doing it. I interesting addition to this list, Isaiah Hartenstein. I don't know where the minutes go with him, but I'm betting on talent. I think he's better than Serge Ibaka pretty clearly. I think he might be better than Ivica Zubats. I think he's established a 20-minute role. Now, the problem is that when Paul George returns, then Marcus Morris returns, um, do they play those you know, those smaller lineups more, which means there's not 48 minutes available at center for Zubats and Hartenstein to share? That's a risk. But with how he's playing, he can't play less than 16 a night. I don't think that's possible. And he should be playing 20 plus. I would be grabbing him and let's see where this goes. Dylan Brooks, again, must roster player. That might change when Morant comes back, but he has been much improved this season. I think Alec Burks is a must roster player. Alec Burks. Um, I know there's been some real rough shooting nights, but yeah, over him, yeah, him or him versus Kemba or Fournier or Quickly or Rose or McBride 
or Grimes. Yeah, I take Burks out of all of those guys. He may not stay the starting point guard. I think he will. But there's enough value there for me to hold him. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, absolute must roster. He's playing so well. Dan Gafford, a must roster player. Josh the Hitman Hart, must roster player. And Patrick Beverly, still not rostered in anywhere enough uh, of leagues. And needs to be. I just don't know why it's taking so long for people to uh, get on board with Pat Beverly. But it shouldn't take you that long to get on board with Bilt Bar because like Patrick Beverly, Bilt Bar is for those of us who want to be intense. We want that energy. We want that fuel to help yap at opposing players or to you know steal the last TV off an unsuspecting grandma at Best Buy because you need that last minute Christmas gift. You need that fuel. You want to get jacked. You want to be throwing steel around at the gym with all your bros. Bilt Bar, mate. It's low calorie, low carb, low fat, low sugar, high in protein, but most importantly, it's high in deliciousness. The, the DQ, the deliciousness quotient of Bilt Bar is through the roof. Co- cookies and cream, go. Raspberry, pretty bloody good. Co- coconut, love it. Limited edition flavors, whew, there's so many great ones out there. I want them to bring back the white, uh, white chocolate raspberry cheesecake. That was a goat flavor as well. So, Bilt Bar. Get it at built.com. Use the code LOCK15. That's L O C K E D 1 5. And you'll save 15%. Get those orders in. Get those boxes at your house. I want to see you look like an episode of Extreme Hoarders when you go into your pantry and there's just 50 boxes of built bars there because that's what you're going to love. You're going to subsist on this stuff. It's amazing. Built bar. Built different. Bet online. Has you covered all season? More props, more odds, more lines than ever before as football season continues to march to the playoffs. As I'm recording this, uh, the Detroit Lions are beating the Arizona Cardinals. Did you bet on that? Well, you could have at Bet Online. They are your number one spot for all sports action this season. So head to the new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today using the code Locked On to get a 50% welcome deposit bonus from basketball to football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the fantastic offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Let's look at some upside grab type players now. These are guys who might not pay off immediately, but there is a trajectory heading their way. Josh Christopher, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. They've already cut Daniel House now. I don't know what other moves they make. It's probably trading Eric Gordon. But can Christopher get in for a 26-minute-a-night roll consistently. It is going to be hard, I guess, because there's Porter, there's Green. Then there's Garrison Matthews, who they converted his contract, and Armani Brooks is around. But I think Christopher's better than Matthews, better than Brooks, and can push into a large role. He's a longer-term upside stash, as is his teammate KJ Martin. Again, it's hard for him, though, with Shangun, with Wood, with Tate. How is there enough minutes for him to play 28 a night? But stuff can happen. Tate could get traded. Someone can get hurt. Wood could go. There's a lot of different things that can happen there. So just keep an eye on KJ Martin. Denny Avdia, outperforming Kyle Kuzma at the moment. He might be a better option, and I think he is a better prospect than Rui Hachimura. He's taking some really big steps forward. I don't view him as a future star or anything like that, but an ability to be a good rebounder with good assists and good defensive stats, that has some fantasy appeal. So he's just a name to watch because, again, Kuzma's not the answer. Hachimura's not the answer, I don't think. They might think that, but I don't think that. KCP's not a long-term option. There is an opportunity here for Avdia to push into a larger role at some point. Trey Murphy, that's mainly because New Orleans is shocking. Um, They're really bad, and he's a young player who needs more minutes. Now, I don't know what it's going to take Willie Green to get rid of blokes like Garrett Temple or Thomas Sadoransky out of the rotation. I don't know. I don't know why we're persisting with this nonsense where everything tells you that they're terrible. But at some point, surely something clicks and Trey could find a larger role. The big stiffy, Bones Highland, he's either a zero-point guy or he drops 24 points on five shots. It's almost impossible to tell with this bloke. But there's a clear need. Doge is not coming back. Murray's a long way away. Austin Rivers is not the answer. Bones should be able to get a a 26-minute-a-night role every night. So he's he's probably one of these guys on this list that has more of an ability to pop off uh, sooner than others. Juice McBride. Currently out with the health and safety protocols. And then, of course, there's Quickly, there's Rose, there's Kemba. Um, if he plays again, who knows? There's Burks. But McBride has something. Defensive tenacity, shooting ability. I really like him as a player. Do I have trust that Tom Thibodeau is going to give him a large role? Not really. But maybe his hand gets forced by trades, by injuries. He's just a name to watch. I like him more than, say, Grimes, for example. And then Davion Mitchell. Now, Mitchell's a guy that, again, it's just a stash. But... I wouldn't be shocked if uh, De'Aaron Fox is traded and they run with a Mitchell Halliburton backcourt. 
Now, Mitchell's not as necessarily a high upside guy because of his poor shooting and poor offense, but he can get steals and his assists are okay. So he's just, again, a bit of a stash guy, seeing if things get mixed up at all there in Sacramento. Lastly, some other names that we need to talk about. With Anthony Davis out for, let's face it, six weeks, um, Taylor Horton Tucker, when he returns from COVID protocols, is probably going to be the answer there. It could be Carmelo Anthony, it could be Trevor Ariza, and in the end, it's probably going to be nobody. But Horton Tucker's the guy that I take the flyer on out of that group. Trey Young in the COVID protocols. So DeLon Wright is worth looking at. Maybe they go with Lou Williams, but Wright has been playing over him. Uh, and Wright's a guy that can get, you know, six assists and two steals. And that has enough value in that short term. A couple of Cavs players with a Coro and Mobley out. Chetty Osman and Dean Wade. Osman, a guy that can score, get some steals, get some assists, and Wade, a double-double type player. They can both have 12-team league value in the short term. In LA, Luke Kennard. Now, when George comes back, I think his minutes get cut, but I do think he starts um, over Eric Bledsoe and Terrence Mann. And it can be yeah, maybe a 16-point scorer. Maybe hit three threes. Yeah, there is enough value in him, but there's uncertainty as to how those minutes get distributed. Gabe Vincent in Miami, I love what he's doing at the moment, um, and it is helpful that Butler has been out for so long, and now Hero has missed the last couple. But yeah, when they, those guys come back, then followed by Caleb Barton and Victor Oladipo, it is going to be hard for Vincent. But for now, he's at least got some short-term stream value. And then in Detroit, I probably should have put this guy in upside stashes, but he's playing already, and that's Saban Lee. Now, last game, we saw Killian Hayes play 36 minutes and Lee play just 19, so that reduces his value a bit. But as a steals option, he's already there. Can he play 30 a night? I really doubt that that happens, but he's taken over the backup spot from Corey Joseph. And we talked about this on this show like four or five weeks ago, saying upside stash guy at some point, he surely has to take over. That's happened. I don't think he's taking over from Killian Hayes, but he can establish a 25 minute a night role at some point, And that might just be enough. That is actually enough though for today's show. So don't forget to follow this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you hit the thumbs up on YouTube, it's great. If you subscribe and hit the notification bell, it's doubly, triply great. So do all of those things. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.